Today I'll be explaining the history of the Grand Trunk Western Railroad, or GTW, as quick as possible. So let's get started. The Grand Trunk Western was the successor and the collection of many smaller roads that were focused around Michigan and Canada. However, the GTW started as the Grand Trunk Railway of Canada, or GTR, which was formed in 1852. The railroad completed a route from Sarnia, Ontario to Port Huron, Michigan in 1859 via a ferry service over the St. Clair River. Until 1873, the GTR used the 5 foot 6 inch gauge, and a gauge change was necessary to meet the 4 foot 8 and a half inch gauge of the US. The GTR had a connection with the Chicago, Detroit, and Canada Grand Trunk Junction Railroad to continue their trains to Detroit, only to then switch to the Michigan Central's line to Chicago. 12 year old Thomas Edison of Port Huron wrote newspapers and was a candy butcher on board GTR trains in 1859, but later, after starting a fire in a baggage car with his chemistry set, was kicked off a moving train at Smith Creek. Throughout the 1870s and 80s, the GTR acquired lines running to Richmond, Jackson, Romeo, Pontiac, Grand Rapids, Durand, and Grand Haven, Michigan, where the railroad would begin ferry service over Lake Michigan in 1902. The railroad then acquired lines running further north in Michigan from the Toledo Saginaw Muskegon Railroad, as well as the Toledo Ann Arbor and North Michigan Railway and Cincinnati Saginaw and Mackinac Railroad to cities such as Bay City, Owasso, Saginaw, among many others. By 1867, it became the largest railway in the world, stretching from Michigan, southern Ontario, New Brunswick, as well as Vermont, Maine, and New Hampshire. One of the early achievements of the GTR and claim to fame was the world's first underwater international rail tunnel that ran under the St. Clair River from Sarnia, Ontario to Port Huron, Michigan, after a desire to expedite rail shipments over the river. The tunnel was 6,000 feet long and hand dug, and ferry service over the river was discontinued. But then, the GTR had an idea. The GTR wanted to connect its line to Chicago, Illinois through southern Michigan, and it was probably one of the few railroads that did considering most other class 1 railroads in America at the time simply said no thanks to Michigan because everyone at the time thought it was swamp. Plans for a western division of the GTR started in the early 1900s and would link the Chicago and Grand Trunk Railway and its lines in Michigan, Illinois, and Indiana called the Grand Trunk Western Railway Company. The name came about as any lines owned by GTR west of the St. Clair and Detroit rivers were called the Western Division and operated under the Grand Trunk Western name. By 1902, the Grand Trunk Western acquired lines in Ohio with a partnership with the Detroit and Toledo Shoreline Railroad. However, by 1919, the parent company of the GTW, the GTR, began suffering financially with its ownership by the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway. The Grand Trunk was nationalized by the Canadian government and many Canadian railways suffered after being consolidated into a government-owned system known as the Canadian National Railway or CNR. CNR then took control of the GTR as well as 213 companies. On November 1st, 1928, the Grand Trunk Western became a subsidiary for the CNR for American operations. On the same day, the GTW would continue operations of the GTR in Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. GTW's lines in New England would be taken under control of the Central Vermont Railway. The CN, GTW, and CV were all closely linked together economically and similar in operations, which was also seen in their heralds. The railroad managed through the Depression in the 1930s despite many railroads being as empty or stagnant as a graveyard. Throughout the 1940s, the railroad spent its time quickly moving equipment and materials during World War II. By this time, the Grand Trunk Western had a few major junction spots including Port Huron, Flint, Durand, Chicago, Battle Creek, and many more. Into the 50s, the Grand Trunk Western kept a heavy steam locomotive influence as other railroads experimented with newfangled diesel-electric locomotives. The railroad would later attain a number of F3 freight diesels. In 1960, CN had a new image under the name Wet Doodle. The GTWs then followed. Finally, the Grand Trunk Western decided to get up to speed with the railroads by running the last regularly scheduled passenger train powered by steam in the U.S on March 27th of 1960, running from Detroit's Brush Street Station to Durand Union Station, along with 3,600 passengers, with the train being run in two sections to accommodate the overload of passengers. It's the U.S. government and Amtrak. They're here to take over passenger service forever. So no more Grand Trunk Western passenger trains. But commuter service was handed over to SEMTA in 1974. Into the 1970s, CN began subsidizing losses of the GTW and created a holding company called the Grand Trunk Corporation in 1971 to partially control GTW stock and finances. 
the GTW also adopted a new slogan, The Good Track Road, in 1975 due to its efforts of well-maintained track, while other railroads suffered with deferred track maintenance. The GTW sought to expand its system. The railroad won an ICC ran bid competing against the CNO to merge the DT and I. However, that wasn't enough. The GTW wanted In 1981, they sought to acquire two bankrupt railroads. One was the Milwaukee Road and the other was the Rock Island. The GTW turned its attention to the Milwaukee after inspecting the Rock Island's condition and need for costly repairs. The Milwaukee Road, however, became more popular with two other bidders, the Sioux Line and the Chicago and Northwestern. The ICC declined the GTW's bid for the Milwaukee, much to the GTW's despair. The Sioux and CNW continued their bidding war until the Sioux won and the two lines were merged in January of 1986. The Grand Trunk Western, however, wasn't like it used to be. Locomotive and rail car maintenance was being consolidated and the Regional Transit Authority, who took over GTW commuter service, SEMTA, discontinued rail service in 1983 due to decreased ridership. In 1978, the railroad had discontinued Lake Michigan Ferry Service and 10 years later had sold its headquarters building in Detroit and moved to Brewery Park. The former Pontiac, Oxford, and Northern lines north of the GM Lake Orient facility were abandoned by 1985. Lines north of Duran were sold to the Central Michigan Railroad in 1987. GTW's main terminal and yard in Chicago was closed in 1990, and the system sold nearly its entire Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton route in 1997. In 1998, the entire former Michigan Airline route, except for a small area in Oakland County given to Co-Rail, was removed and became the Quindercott. The final blow to the GTW was by 2000. Engine terminals and maintenance facilities were moved and downsized in Chicago, Detroit, Durand, Pontiac, Port Huron, and Battle Creek. 2001 Port Huron closure was a very strong hit to many GTW employees and were completely unaware of the closure. They showed up for work like normal only to find the doors locked and now unemployed as PDS Railcar Services took over the building and closed it up. In December of 1991, Canadian National announced they would consolidate all U.S. railroads under a brand known as CN North America. The GTW's iconic paint scheme, known by many people throughout Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, and Illinois, would then be replaced by a new CN scheme. Railroads including the Illinois Central, Bessemer, and Lake Erie, Duluth, Mesabi, and Iron Range, as well as the Wisconsin Central, were swallowed up into the new brand, bringing about an end for the long-standing Midwestern railroads. However, the Grand Trunk Corporation still exists and has been considered a Class 1 railroad by the Association of American Railroads since 2002, as a company on paper, or a railroad that owns no locomotives, rolling stock, track, or facilities. Many locomotives still retain their iconic GTW paint scheme, though show their age and remind many rail fans of another time. Many GTW locomotives these days are assigned to switching duties or local freight work, and are still a common sight in many cities across Michigan and Illinois. To some, it's a rarity. Many people these days refer to the GTW as the Grand Trunk. Even with the Grand Trunk Western now operated by CN, people are still able to recognize the iconic P5 and M5s of the engines. The sounds of the engine roaring and the red and blue paint scheme so synonymous with the Grand Trunk Western is able to be recognized by so many. Every time a GTW engine rolls down the line, even to the non-train enthusiast, it's always known these gallant little engines as part of the Grand Trunk Western Railroad Company. Like the video? That's great! Leave a like and tell me in the comments what railroad I should do next and how you like this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching. I get a sad kind of feeling when I see a passenger train in this fast.